I first started biking, I was a roadie. I was all about fast group rides, pace lines, and being 110 pounds for climbing the hills as fast as I could. That was the case until I got this bike. This is my Scott Scale 720. I got this in December of 2016, and it showed me what it was to love mountain biking. I remember opening the box and seeing the color scheme and instantly loving it. It's a carbon hardtail with SRAM GX components, Synchros alloy wheels, and some XTR brakes that I got a steal on. The geometry is unmatched. It's perfect for my body and has never felt wrong or out of place. The only problem was, after riding this bike, I could never get back into road biking. No road bike I tried had the same feel. Nothing felt as smooth, stiff, or responsive. So, with the help of a local rider who did the same thing, I decided to make it my road bike. First up is the fork. This is an all-carbon, rigid fork for mountain biking. Let me stress that, mountain biking. A road bike fork would throw the geometry off and make it handle really odd. Another piece that you will need for the fork that I actually forgot about until I was piecing the bike together is a crown race. Then come the wheels. For my conversion, I went with the Stan's Grail wheels. Typically they are used for cyclocross or gravel bikes. They are lightweight and Stan's has the option to adjust the hub size needed for your rear triangle and your front fork. When ordering new wheels, you can go with whatever wheel that you want to, you just have to make sure that the hub will fit. You will also need a cassette matching the same number of gears as your mountain bike cassette. Not the same size, but the same number of gears. Another important note is that you will need wheels with disc rotor mounts. The mount allows you to put the rotor on either with a center locking mechanism or a six bolt pattern. I also keep this magnet on the back wheel for an easy swap with my Garmin speed and cadence sensor. Moving to the mechanical side of things, the first step that I always do is shift down. Start with this before you do anything else as it's a great starting point. Our focus, for the most part, will be on the front of the bike. We have to remove the fork to place our rigid fork on there. The first step in this is removing your brake caliper. This is done by completely unscrewing the bolts that hold the brake caliper onto your fork, typically found at the bottom left. The sizes can vary for the bolts, but typically 4mm or 5mm Allen wrenches are needed. I always screw the bolts and the bracket back into the fork for safekeeping. Always make sure you get every bolt. Trace the brake line down from the handlebar and see if it is being held anywhere on the fork by a bolt like mine or a zip tie or a C-clamp or something like that. Once the brake caliper is completely taken off the fork, you can move to the securing bolts of your fork. Normally I start with the center bolt and unscrew it completely. In doing so, our fork becomes loose and sort of free. Next, I move to the two side bolts, loosening them to let the fork be completely free. However, I don't unscrew these all the way, just loosen them enough to take the fork off. Sliding the fork off is simple and easy once this is done. I like to gently lower my bars to hang for just a minute or two while I get the other fork. Once it's completely removed, I leave the mountain bike wheel on the fork for easy storage, and it's also ready to go whenever you want to convert back into mountain mode. Next, we slide our rigid fork into place. You can put any spacers on the steer tube once you get it all the way through the frame to ensure that your bars are in the same position as they were before. Once the bars and stem are on, I snug up the two side clamp bolts so that the fork will not fall out. I will reposition and torque these down later. I will note that the fork I ordered came with a through axle for the front, 
with this weird slide-out threading thing. When ordering a fork for this conversion, make sure that you have a through axle or a quick release to go with the road wheels. Now we will put the front wheel on, which is easy enough. I do this before putting the caliper back on the fork, the reason being it makes it easier to align the brake later on. Like my other fork, I keep these brake bolts lightly tightened in their respective cutouts for safekeeping. This next step is really the hardest part of this entire conversion. Sometimes you get lucky and the brake lines up perfectly, and sometimes it takes some finesse in moving things around to get it just right. But to start, I clamp the brake line down wherever I can, just so I don't forget. Then slide the caliper over the brake rotor and begin to tighten the bolts down. Moving it to the left and to the right, make sure you get it centered, and once you have it in the spot that you want, tighten them down completely. Once you do get them right, you have some awesome stopping power for the road. Another part I should mention is this star nut. There are different kinds, but this is what goes into the steer tube of the fork and clamps on the inside to essentially attach it to your bike. Moving to the back of the bike, the workload gets a little easier. We have already shifted the bike down, so now we can simply just remove the wheel. We will be using the through axle for our other wheels, so you can just lay that to the side for now. Now, you simply slide the road wheel in its place and screw the axle back in. That's it. You can see that without doing anything to the derailleur, it shifts just fine all through the gears with no skips or risk of dropping the chain. Some finishing touches with lining the fork up, torquing the bolts down, and you're done. You now have this slick looking road mode mountain bike. Your favorite off-road bike is now built for speed on the pavement. Now there will be people in the comments telling me that this is pointless. With a one by drivetrain and a small ring up front smaller than the small ring on the compact chain ring set, the bike doesn't seem very capable. But rest assured, it is very capable. Not only that, but this thing is damn fun to ride. The frame geometry of a mountain bike is surprisingly comfortable for long road rides. The stiffness of the frame can also be felt on the climbs, making this one badass climbing machine. You have excellent stopping power for sketchy descents, and all in all, this makes for a very fast and very capable road bike. I put thousands of miles on this conversion. I climbed over 5,000 feet to Klingman's Dome on it, I've done numerous sentry rides on it, and several group rides where the bike was more than capable in pulling a pace line, climbing, and even sprinting in a sea of drop bar road bikes. I should mention that this whole conversion takes less than an hour, and it weighs in at about 17 pounds. As long as you don't mind having a high cadence on some of the downhill parts, this is a very fun ride. So, go and make yourself more of a roadie while still having that off-road look. Thank you for watching.